God. <clears throat> How many of you know that we're all called to freedom, but not everybody's walking in freedom? Amen? Hallelujah. But uh, today, I want to say um, happy 4th of July weekend. Glory to God. Um, I know, like I said in prayer, um, in 1776, this country was birthed. Amen. Christy, good to see you. Hallelujah in the house. Glory to God. Aubrey. Yeah, my number one little fan back there. Hey, girl. Hey, pretty girl. How you doing? It's amazing how kids can walk in any room and it just goes, you know, everybody just loves a kid. So, hallelujah. If you want to get a lot of attention, just grab a baby. Hallelujah. You'll get some attention. Not that they're looking for attention, but it just happens. Hallelujah. We're good to see you guys in the house. Hallelujah. Um, but this, um, today, hundreds of years ago, this country was birthed. And though this country um, is not perfect, I think we all know this country is not perfect, okay? Uh, but it's still a great country. We have our issues just like every country does, okay? And I'm thankful to be an American. I'm very thankful. Very thankful, okay? And um, I want to continue to be the best American I can be to all people. And I believe uh, I'm looking at a room full of people that feel the same way. Glory to God. You know, we're not perfect, but blessed and thankful to live in this wonderful country. Many people want to talk about all the wrong in our country. Have y'all heard anybody talking about wrong things? Have y'all heard any, like, complaining about our country? You know, you don't have to go far to hear that, right? Okay. Now, you can choose to do that. And, uh, you know, everybody's free. We get, we got free to speech, okay? Got the freedom of speech, unless you're on social media. and You got to watch what you say, Okay. But I choose to talk about all the good we have in our country. And that's what I want to choose to do every day. And I want to encourage you guys, when you're at work, when you're, you're at home, whatever, man, talk about the good things to this country. Because though we do have issues, I can promise you, you, you can rest assured of this right here. There's very few borders that are being invaded in other countries. And why is that? And it's been that way for years. It ain't like this has just started. There's been people trying to get to America for hundreds of years. Why? Because the word's out that if you can get here, there is the possibility of a better life. Better life. And you can ask immigrants that have came here and built a better life, they'd be the first to stand up here and tell you, this is the best decision I ever made. Okay? So they're, they're wanting to get here because there's something available here that's not available in China. You notice they're not having a border crisis in China. They're not trying to kick the walls down to get to China today, okay? And there's a reason why. There's something here that's not everywhere. And his name's Jesus. The freedom to express your religion, whether that be Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, don't matter. You have the freedom to express what you believe. That's not the case in every country. A lot of countries, you express what you believe, and you have no head. You lose your family. You know, there's people in other countries that when they turn to Jesus, their whole families abandon them for turning to Jesus. It's just a fact. I mean, we look around sometimes, and we think about how bad we got it, okay? The reality is, guys, as long as sin is on the earth, you're always going to have issues everywhere. Okay? Does that mean we don't stand up and fight and, and, and bring about a, a, a movement of righteousness? No, no, we continue to do that. But we first do it in prayer, then we do it in action. And all of our actions should be done in love, okay? I mean, Jesus could have called legions of angels to come and rescue him from going to the cross. Now, if there's anybody that was getting ready to experience some injustice and some pain, who was that? He experienced some serious stuff. Spit in the face, slap, I mean, naked, pretty bad stuff. And he had the access to call for help, but he chose not to. I'm just telling you guys, we have a lot to be thankful for in the country that we live. You know, we have the, the freedom of religion, we have the freedom to bear arms. You know, there's countries that don't have that. You ain't having no gun in your house in another country. But you can do that here. And you say, why is that so important? Oh, I don't have to answer that, okay? <laughs> freedom of speech. 
Many countries don't experience these great freedoms, but we do. If we can look back at all the people in other countries that have been blessed through the United States, it would probably be mind-blowing. This country is blessed, and I'm blessed to be in this country. Do you know this country has funded many, many good works all across the world? This country feeds a lot of hungry people all over the world. This country does a lot of good. Do we have some bad people that are in charge in areas of this country? It's been that way since it signed the documents in 1776. I'm telling you, the enemy went to work on this country. And how does he work? He works through people, okay? White people, black people, brown people. He works through people. You know who God works through? White people, black people, and brown people. That is just the way it is, okay? And there's some people that will yield to righteousness in Jesus, and some people will yield to wickedness in the devil. It's just a fact, okay? So that's why this country is in a position it's in is because of rulers that have took in position and they've not held up the Bible and the, and the good things that Jesus wants to bring in this land. But that's just, that's happening all over the place. Amen. Our country is not experiencing anything else that other countries are not experiencing. It's just, thank God, we have some barriers that has kept some of the wickedness and evil from getting too uh, you know, uh, close to us. Amen. That's why I thank God for all of our military uh, that are present and past that have fought to keep this country uh, a free country. And you may say, well, Nathan, they, you know, they, their fighting don't really result in us being free. And I'm going, let me tell you something. If we don't have soldiers in other countries and on our borders and around the world, there would be a Chinese flag hanging in this. There'd be an a Iran flag hanging right here. There'd be a Russia flag hanging right here right now. They want this territory. You better know it, okay? There's countries that are salivating on how to get to this country and take over our country. If we did not have any protection out there, these men and women do it, after, I mean, they just do it by their own sure will to want to help this country, amen? And I, I'm thankful for all those that have done that. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that is becoming more distorted than ever before. We are seeing it harder and harder to locate what is true and what is not true. How many of y'all believe that? That it's really hard to navigate. Is that true? I mean, is that really what happened? Did that really go like that? I mean, I'm telling you guys, it is, it is a fact. And I was listening to R.C. Sproul, which is an old minister. Okay, he's, I think he's passed and gone now. But anyway, he was talking. And they had just came out with TV. The color TV, okay? And he was actually on TV, and he was explaining him being on TV. And he says, you guys see me up here on the platform right now. But what you don't understand, that what's behind me is fake. It's not real. I could go over there, and I could push that whole wall down. It's not real. When I came in, they put makeup all over me to hide every blemish. So really what you're seeing is, is you're not seeing the real me, Okay? They started then, they've been always, you know, trying to distort the image that we're actually seeing, that we're really not seeing the real thing, we're just seeing what they want us to see. They're creating what they want us, to, they're creating the narrative. Well, man, now that we have all the technology and the computers and the electronics, they can literally have somebody talking and that's somebody totally different. But you think it's that person talking. That's where this is going. Well, who's behind the media in driving this fake lying narrative? We know the enemy, amen? Because he wants to deceive. Did Jesus not tell us that deception would get stronger as the last days came? He said, beware that you don't fall victim to deception. And man, the enemy is turning it up a notch, okay? And I feel like the body of Christ, if we're not aware of righteousness and that we lose the, the touch of the pages of the Bible and we lose those moments of getting in His Word and getting His Word in us, lying and deception is going to look even more better. Even to those that say they're Christians. We've got to be cautious, guys. The truth is being attacked. It's being hidden. It's being censored. And it is being replaced with lies and deception. And we all know who's behind that. So today I want to talk about a question that somebody asked in the Bible. And it's going to be found in uh, St. John chapter 18, verse 33. And y'all can just kind of follow along with me. I'm in the New King James Version. It says, Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Now, this is at the end of Jesus' life. He's about to be crucified, and now he's facing the judge. The, the, the Jews have brought him 
to, the, uh, to Pilate to be judged, to be found guilty. Because the Jews in that day, they could not kill people. Okay? They just couldn't do it. They couldn't kill their own. Okay? They had to come and bring it before the judge. And this is where they're, they're judged. So Pilate you know, says, are you the king of the Jews? And then Jesus said, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? And Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered. You notice he didn't answer his question. He, he, he answered what he wanted to answer. Okay? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? And Jesus answered, you say rightly that I'm a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, and I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Then Pilate makes a statement, and he said, what is truth? Has anybody ever heard somebody say that? Have you read that in the Bible? What is truth? Or really what he could say is, what is really true? What is really true? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. It was too late then. Pilate had already been faced with the truth. And he chose to move forward with executing Jesus. That whole thing of going out and washing his hand was nothing more than a ritual. He had truth now and he, he, was, he, was, he was ignoring it. Amen? Now, now, Pilate's wife, a few days earlier, she said, or might have been that night before this, this encounter, said, hey, hey, look, don't have nothing to do with this guy. I had a dream about him. Basically, what she's saying is, don't you do nothing to this guy. Don't touch this guy. But he violated his own conscience and he went forward, like many people do today. They know what's true, but then they keep moving forward. There's people... That may be in this room, maybe watching via Facebook, then they're in the world. You have been given chance after chance to meet Jesus. I mean, chance after chance, Jesus has been knocking at the door of your heart. And some people may say, well, what about the people that live in other countries that never hear the gospel at all? They can't use that excuse because Romans 1 tells us that even the creation speaks of who God really is. You can't use no excuse at all. Everybody is going to be able to know that there's a God. You just reject it. So many people do. They reject the truth, just like Pilate did. He went out there, and he just kind of went through the motions, and he rejected Jesus as king right there. And later we find out in the, it, it didn't go well with Pilate at all, okay? Like it's not going to go well with us. Have you ever heard the scripture I read about where the Bible says that God's spirit will not always strive with a man? His spirit will not always dwell with us. In Romans chapter 1, it talks about how God gave them over to deep delusion and a depraved mind. That is people that are actually living on the earth at that time. That means when he does that, there is no hope for you. You're, you're gone. You've made your decision while you're still living and breathing. It's kind of like this right here. It's kind of like God walks with us all the time. And he's holding our hand and he's trying to compel those that don't know him to know him. He's sending people across their pathway. It's kind of like you going down or me going down some steps in life. And each step I take, God's right there and he's trying to get your attention. Hey, don't do this no more. Please don't do this no more. Don't stop this. Stop this. And then you take another step. And he says, hey, look, man, don't do this. And he, he's, he's walking with that individual all the way down those steps. Now, we don't know when the last step is for any individual. We don't know when it's the last step for people in our family, people on our job. We don't know when that last step is. But there comes a place, according to the Bible, that people step for the last time, and then there's no going back. God removes himself from that individual. That's why our hearts should be so aching and moved by Jesus getting into people. By us getting freedom to people. Us getting the answer to people. Every day of our life, we should be moving in that direction. Because there is a time in people's lives that you will reject no more. The rejection's over. Your decision has been made. That can be in the body or that can be out of the body. Either way. It's a big deal, guys. I know we talk about freedom in America. But let me tell you something. There is free Americans dying and going to hell. So what's your free America doing there? 
What you going to do with your flag on your T-shirt when you show up and the devil's looking at you? It ain't going to, it ain't, it, man, I was born in America. What do you mean? I, I'm cool. No, you ain't cool. Come on in here. You're going to burn forever. I mean, this is real life, guys. It's a big, big deal. And we need to realize that the freedom that we have in Christ is not just for us. That freedom is to be expressed out through our lives and out through our words and our conversation. And again, it will make the difference. But today I want to talk about freedom is in Jesus. Our freedom is in the truth. Freedom is in the truth and bondage is in lies. We live in a time where lying and deception is all around us and it seems to be getting worse by the day. We see lying in the media. We see lying in relationships. We see lying in the workplace, school, politics. We even see lying in the church. There's people that just tell lies and act like there's no big deal. That is not good, my friend. And I'm going to tell you something. If anybody in this room, if you've ever told a lie, your heart has condemned you. You felt bad about it. But we just ignore it and we keep on going. What are we doing? Taking that step. Taking that step. And there's a place that even a Christian can get to where your conscience becomes seared. That means you, you're just doing things and don't even feel bad about it. And we don't want to be that way. Amen? People will tell a lie and think that nothing's about, well, you know, a little white lie never hurt nobody. What? Hey, what do you mean? I mean, a lie hurts people. Amen? And it seems, uh, and, and then they act like there's nothing wrong with telling a lie. Who is the producer of lies? John 8, 44 says this. He says, you are, your, you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. So who is encouraging us to lie? If the moment that you have the thought, man, I don't need to tell them the truth because if I do, it could cost me. The option you're getting at that point, who's it from? <laughs> You're getting a good option probably. And it probably seems good because it could save you your job, save you your relationship. Oh, you see this in relationships a lot. You know, that dude, he don't want to tell the truth. He wants to be telling what he needs to tell to save his hide. And that's in dating relationships. And that chick too. And you know, the girl, she's the same way. She'd be doing that stuff too. It's just, it's just all around us, guys. Oh, if I just say this, then I won't get in trouble. And then you've got to remember what lie you have. I mean, you don't need to be telling the lies. Amen. Don't be doing it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, there was a time years ago when I was doing trim work in a subdivision that was close to my house. And uh, I basically was in the house, and the builder walked in, and he said, uh, you know, Nathan, who, who damaged that cabinet? It was obvious, man. It was messed up. I messed up the cabinet. I felt bad. I did. I, I don't really remember what I did, but I, I messed it up, okay? He said, who messed that cabinet up? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who did it. You know, I mean, that is pretty jacked up. I mean, I don't know what all I said, but I lied, okay? Well, that joker, he, he walked out, and he was walking up to the trailer, and I'm sitting there, and I'm going, oh, gosh, I hadn't been saved long, man. I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, this ain't good. I felt terrible. Has anybody else done that? Y'all felt that way? I felt bad. I mean, I felt so bad. Well, what did I do? Did I just forget about it and move on? No, 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 no. I got out of the house, walked down to that trailer, and I'm going, <laughs> man, I'm getting ready to confess, and this probably ain't going to go good. Amen. Is anybody else with me? Have you ever confessed a, a lie, and you just didn't know how it was going to go? Well, I walk into the trailer, and I said, hey, dude, Frank, look, man, I just want to let you know, man, that was his name, too. <laughs> hey, uh, <clears throat> I lied. I did that to that cabinet. I messed that cabinet up. And did you know he understood? And did you know that when I walked back to that house to finish what I was doing, I felt so good on the inside? Because I had made a lie, I had corrected it to the truth. See, when you walk in truth, there's a sense of freedom. There's a sense of, man, you, you feel good about yourself. Living a lie, man, it's just, it's, it's, it's terrible, amen? But if I had not done nothing at that moment, did you know it would have got easier to lie again? It would have got easier to lie again? I mean, there's some people that are really professional liars. And then there's some that when they lie, their whole face turns red. Oh, bro. Yeah, good try, man. But you, you're a different color right now. So, I mean, obviously, you did not, you're not telling the truth. I mean, so tell the truth, man. The devil, he's the father of lies. He was the first liar on the earth because Adam and Eve listened to his lie and then obeyed it. Now, lying's everywhere. Adam and Eve believed the first lie. They yielded to the first lie. They believed it and they acted upon it, and now we're all. 
subject to liars. And we've been some at some times. When you tell a lie, then you open yourself up to more of the devil's plans and ways in your life. Did you know when you obey the devil, you give him more access to your life? And the more access he gets to your life is the less access that God has to your life. You know there's a battle for your soul. There's a battle for your life between God and the devil. Now, we know God's all-powerful. Amen? But if we don't give God access, guess what? He's not going to violate your will and just come in and take over you. Amen? You still have to choose to obey God. Amen? Hallelujah. This is why you see the world in the shape that it's in right now. When the devil is in control, then lying becomes normal. Wherever there is a lie, you need to know that there was a truth there first. Truth is always present when a lie is being presented. The question is, what is truth or what is really true? That's where we're faced at right now. That's where we've been faced at for the last year and a half. Through the whole COVID, election, you know, all of the injustice. I mean, we just go on and on. You know, what is really true? I mean, you're always hearing 18 sides to a story. What is really true? There is a truth that runs through everything you see, but you and I have to be slow to make the judgment. We've got to pray about it, and we've got to let God lead us through these days. Amen? Don't be so quick to jump on bandwagons. Well, this is my favorite person. I really love them, so I'm just going to listen. to what, No, it don't matter who they are. We want, I don't care if they're people you don't like. God may use them to speak truth through them that you need. Sometimes God will do that to get your eyes off of an individual. Our eyes should never be on a person or a personality. Amen? It should never. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So John 8, 31 says this. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Whose teachings should we be following? Jesus' teachings. And he said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So what is truth? What is truth? Who said it? Freedom. What is truth? Okay. That's the key. That's what we're up against right now. As a Christian, as a Christ follower, what is really true? Where can we find truth? Amen. It's found in John 14, 6, which all of them are good. They're good. They're right. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Everything that we do say needs to run through the filter of the Word of God. Everything that somebody else does and says, it needs to run through the filter of the Word of God. Because this is the ultimate truth. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus is very bold when he said these things because he knows that the devil will come to each one of us to get us to buy into his lies about us or about God. Why do so many people get mad at God about things that go wrong in their life? Think about that. You ever got mad at God? Something didn't go uh, right in your life. Maybe something happened. Tragedy. A bill. Something happened in your life and it just wasn't what you ex was expecting. And you feel like, man, this just ain't fair. This ain't right. Why would this happen? I mean, come on, man. Am I the only one? I think we all have. We've been there. Amen? We've all had questions. Why is this happening? Why would that happen to that person? I mean, it's a legit question. There's nothing wrong with that. You know God can handle your questions, no matter how difficult they are. He's never going to look at you when you come to him and you ask a question. Oh, you idiot, why are you here? No. He welcomes our questions. And when you don't know an answer, <laughs> we need to have an answer. What am I supposed to do? Just act like it ain't real? No. You got a question, take it to God. He's big enough to handle it. Amen. The devil brings lies to their minds and he points to God as allowing this happening in our lives. Do you know that? There can be something bad happening in our life and it's amazing how the enemy will jump on your shoulder and he'll start, you know, bringing uh, uh, things and, uh, you know, uh, reasons. You know, well, you know, God's trying to teach you something. You know, he did this uh, because, you know, you missed it last week. It's because you hadn't really been doing right. This is why this is happening. See, the devil will come to you, and, and he wants to get you to turn your attention to him, I mean, to, to, to God, and blame him of why things don't go good in your life. The devil is behind the bad things in our lives, not God. Amen? 
when we don't understand, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute to kind of give everybody a little hope because I don't want to leave you hanging. I'll leave. Many people have believed their lies, his lies and no longer serve God. Do you know there's people that have believed the devil's lies and they blame God and they've walked out of church and never come back? Or maybe some well-meaning Christian will be at a funeral and say, you know, well, you know, uh, God you know, took your, your baby because he, he knew what was ahead and he just didn't want your baby to suffer. Let me ask you something as a parent or just as a person in general. Do you want to serve a God that you never know when he might take your baby because he sees something ahead that you don't see? I'm asking a question and that means you can shake your head or just keep looking at me like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a parent. That ain't sitting well with me. I'm not interested in serving a God that I never know. He's about to wipe one of my kids out because their future may be a little bleak. That's not happening, okay? But yet the devil will sell that bill of lies to people and they'll bite it hook, line, and sinker and never go back to church because it flowed out of the mouth of a so-called well-meaning Christian. And if you've said those things, the altar will be open today and we can ask God to forgive us. Hallelujah. Don't say those things. Ever. You know what? You know, when you don't know about something, you know the best thing to do? Just shut up. Just don't say nothing. Okay? I mean, if a, if a tragedy happened and, it, and you don't understand why it happened, then guess what? You just don't understand. <laughs> then just be cool. Amen? So many people want to try to figure it out. No, no. We are little bitty people with a little bitty brain. Emily, we use about 10% of our brain. I mean, I use probably 25 or 30, but you know, the average person. No. But seriously, we have 100% capacity, but why do we only use 10% and we want to act like we can figure everything out? Are you kidding me? No. No, the best thing you could do for somebody that's just walked through a tragedy is just, you know, hey, God loves you, man. He's with you. You keep it short and sweet. And you wrap your arms around them and you love them. I mean, even if God was to reveal the truth to you about the situation, are they in a position to hear it? No. No, they're not. Down the road, you know, the Lord may, may minister to them and show them some reasons why that happened. But in the moment of a tragedy, guys, I'm not wanting to find out the formula of what happened here. No, I'm just trying to get through the next day. It's hard when you lose a loved one. It's hard when, you're, when you can't pay your bills. I mean, come on, man, I just want to see hope. Last thing I want to know is God's up there and He might be against me. He might be for me. Because the reality is, is if God's against us, friends, shut the book. Let's go ahead and go on out there and just hope that we ain't the next one he strikes, okay? Here's no hope. I mean, if God's working with the devil, we in trouble, my friends. Just go ahead and know that you could be at home today and be wiped out. No, that's not the case at all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Truth will bring freedom in our lives, and it will, it will bring God's help and assistance as well. Do we like the truth? Not all the time. Have you ever heard the saying, you can't handle the truth? Or the truth what? Hurts. The truth, well, it's other ones too. I mean, I've just got a couple here. So, but the truth hurts. Amen. Why? The truth of God will always reveal what the real problem is in our lives. And guess what? It will never be God. It's always easier to blame others about what went wrong in our life than to ask the question, what truly caused the problem? Y'all hear me when I say this. It's always easier to blame somebody else, including God, when something don't go the way you want it to go. Instead of just simply asking the question, God, what really went wrong here? Why did this happen? Show me. So in a moment of that right there, what do you need? You need mercy and you need truth to be able to get past some things in your life. Amen? Many times, it is that we did not obey the truth. How many people here today can remember a time that you, you did what was right and got in trouble for it? Did anybody remember a day you did something right and you got in trouble for it? I mean, really. When we do right things, you don't have to be concerned about getting in trouble. I mean, why is the kid at home sweating BBs when mom and dad's coming home and thinking that they're going to be caught because they didn't do what they were told to do? 
There's a lot of kids. I was one of them, okay? But how many kids that have done everything mom and dad have asked them to do, and then when they walk in the door, they're feeling, you know, like they're going to get in trouble? Uh Uh-uh. Matter of fact, you're probably going to be saying, hey, I just want to let y'all know I did it. I just want to let y'all know I knocked it out. The list is here. I'm done. See, you feel happy about what you did. You don't feel like you've got to run and hide because you did what was right. Amen? That means you did what you were told to do, and you didn't get in trouble. When do most people get in trouble? Does anybody know? This ain't a trick question, man. This is really simple, like first grade stuff, okay? So it's when you do something you shouldn't. Well, no, man, I, I did this, and they just accused me. Look, man, you got one, two, three isolated cases. I'm going to tell you something right now. For the most part, when you do wrong is when you're going to get busted. Okay? You ain't getting busted for doing right if you do right all the time. All right? I mean, we've all been on a side of where we, we got accused wrongly. But I'm just saying overall, okay? Hallelujah. Glory to God. That means you did what you were told. Hallelujah. All right, how many of you have ever read a red light? Now, let's be real now. When you ran that red light. Did anybody maybe do it? What are you looking for? Your cousin? You looking for your mom or your daddy? No. You looking to just go, I, I just hope there ain't some blue lights around here. Amen? Why? Because you just did something you weren't supposed to do. You just ran that red light. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of us have eaten something and knew we shouldn't be eating that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how about how many of us have posted something that we shouldn't have posted? Let me say it this way. How many have been tempted to post something? <laughs> whoa! Come on! Hallelujah! Whoa, wait. Kick it all up, baby. I mean, whoa, man. Huh, that felt good. I feel better already. Glory to God. <laughs> How many of you don't even care about posting? There we go. All right. There we go. That's the people we need to be hanging out with, y'all posters. Okay? We get with them people. I'll leave. <laughs> Glory to God. How about uh, say something we shouldn't have? Anybody ever done that? Ooh. Did that just come out of my mouth? Well, Cindy, you told me the other day this right here. Oh, did I really? Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? We've, all, we've been there. Hallelujah. Buy something. That we shouldn't have bought. Oh, yeah. You know, do you notice that everything that I've just said has to do with you? Not God. Everything. You know? And everything I just said, okay, can lead to bad things in our lives. You know, if you eat enough of the wrong things, enough... Your body is not going to function right. Amen, Pastor. Woo, you're right. Brother, I know you're right. Preach it, man. You're good. I'm just telling you. Are we listening to God? Are we doing what he told us to do? And I'm saying that about saying things, buying things. Does God want his kids in debt? Has there been many a times maybe you're at the table getting ready to sign a contract and you feel this uneasiness in here like, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. But then we go ahead and do it. You can't pay your bills. You're struggling. And you go, why God let this happen to me? What? See, some of this, what I'm talking about is called <laughs> common sense. It's kind of like just using our brain. Now, again, I'm with y'all, and I have not used my brain, okay? So I'm not pointing a finger. I've done some of the things I shouldn't have done neither. I mean, come on. How many of y'all enjoy food of all kinds? Even the part that ain't good for you. I do because I carry some of it around with me all the time. I like food. It's just, you know, when the doctor says, don't eat that. He's not telling you for his sake. Because he's probably going to go home and eat that. He's just telling you, based on all the records, might not be good for you to eat that. Because you know somebody can eat Twinkies all the days of their life, and they never have no symptoms. 
Somebody else eat Twinkie and their blood sugar shoot through the roof. Everybody's created a little difference. I'm just saying, guys, we got to be careful that, that, that we don't do things and then blame others. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I ain't blaming all the restaurants for serving me food. Well, if they'd quit serving me food, I wouldn't be a little bit heavy right here. You know, if they wouldn't have put a red light there, I would not have to run the red light, but I got to go. You know what I'm saying? If they wouldn't have said that, then I wouldn't have had to say this. You follow what I'm saying? Just blaming others. No, your life is whose? God didn't give your life to nobody else. My life is Nathan's. So when I look in the mirror, and I do quite frequently because I love me. Just being real with y'all. I don't know where y'all are at on this thing. I love me, okay? So when I look in the mirror and I see me, I don't see perfection. I see a bump here. Or I see a mole here. I see some things that I would like to be better. But I, I still, I, 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 think, I think I'm cool. I think I'm cool, okay? I think I got it going on. But I'm not perfect. I take my shirt off and it really gets bad. I'd be like, Lord, we don't need to be looking at that mirror no more. We need to run from that mirror. Glory to God. Be sucking it in. Whoa, yeah, no, nah, man. <clears throat> but I'm just saying, guys, we have to own our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And where was I at? Okay. We have all done something that we wish we had not done or said. When we do, what is it time for? It's time for mercy and truth. We want mercy to help us get out of this situation, and we want truth to never get back in the situation. Man, look, if you're in a position today, okay, and you're, you're not like, man, I wish I wasn't here, I made some mistakes, you're at the right place. Because God will give you mercy, and then he's going to give you some truth, like, hey, let's don't do it again, but I'm going to help you get out of it. And God can get you out of it really, really quick. Amen? We want God's mercy, and then we want to know what is the right thing for us to do. Jesus said that we would know the truth, and the truth would what? Set us free. So many, so many don't like to hear the truth. They get mad at the truth. People like the truth as long as it will allow them to do whatever they want to do. That's why you have so many religions. People love Jesus until they find out they can't do some things they want to. Then it's time to look for another God to worship that will allow me to live the way I want to live. Truth will not change to fit your life. Your life has to change to fit the truth. Period. Okay? That's why people that, you know, uh, in the homosexual community, they don't like hearing a lot about this. It's not my idea. I didn't preach that marriage is between a man and a woman. I don't know where you're at on the radar. I love all people. But... The Bible. I got to go with what God said. And sometimes if you're in that lifestyle, and not just that, it could be, it could be lying, stealing, it could be murder. It could, I mean, there's a whole list of things that you could be involved in. When you hear the truth, that truth will set you free. It could be you're just a lost sinner. It could be somebody you just, you don't know Christ. But when the truth comes and you receive it, it sets you free. Did you know there's people behind bars today that are freer than people out here? There's people in China right now that are more free than people in the United States of America. There's people that live in this country that are in bondage to sin and think they're living in a free country. Think they're free in this free country. The truth is that we have been set free from all these sins that are meant to destroy our life. Paul put it this way in Titus 2, verse 11. He said, For the remarkable, undeserved grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Lives with a purpose that reflects spiritual maturity in this present age, awaiting and confidently expecting the fullness or fulfillment of our blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who willingly gave himself to be crucified on our behalf to redeem us and purchase our what? Our freedom from all wickedness and to purify for himself a chosen and very special people to be his own possession. Who are enthusiastic for doing what is good. That means we're a people looking to do good, my friend. We're always looking to do good. When evil and bad presents itself or the opportunity to tell somebody like it is or to run the red light, we don't. We put a bridle on our tongue. We stop. We used to break pad. Ugh! Okay? I'm just telling you, man. We pull back from the table. We remember that we don't eat. To, we eat to live. We don't live to eat. How many of y'all live to eat? 
Okay, we need to eat to live. That means we don't need as much to live as we think we do. Amen? But we got to be willing to say, hey, no, we want to do what's right because we love our family. We love those around us. So what is freedom? Romans 6, 7 says this, For the person who has died with Christ has been freed from the power of sin. When you give your life to Jesus, now you're experiencing true freedom, my friend. True freedom is to be free from sin. Sin is the problem today and it will be the problem tomorrow. As long as sin is in the world, there will be problems. That is why it's so important that we take this message of freedom to the world. Freedom is found in truth or in Jesus. Jesus is the truth that the world needs. God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to give his life for us to pay the price for the sins of the world. That if we, that if we would give our lives to Jesus, then we could be made free from sin. Then God loved us so much that his spirit moved on men to write down what God told them to write in a book called the Bible so we could live by every day. He gave us the instruction manual for success right here. But there's too many Christians that are looking for preachers to tell them what to do in life. There's too many Christians that are running around and finding churches and they want the pastor to be their spiritual source every single day of their life. I'm not called to lead you spiritually every day. I'm called to feed you spiritual truths. It's going to be up to you and me to walk this out. And the only way you're going to do it, you're going to have to get this book in you. It has to be a personal thing from me all of us. Amen. The truth of God's word is being attacked by the devil and his followers. But I'm here to declare today that God's truth will stand in this age just like it has stood in all ages before. Those that oppose God's truth will be dead and gone and buried and out of here. Okay? But God's truth will live on. Let's be a people that will, fo will not follow the lies of the devil but will follow the truth of God's word. Truth is only found in God's word. Freedom is only found in the truth of God's word. One thing we must always remember is that we were once slaves to sin and in total darkness, but now we have been set free from sin through Jesus. We are no longer a slave of this world, but we are now sons and daughters of God. And that, my friend, is true freedom. If you're a follower of Christ and you have given your life to Jesus, then you are no longer held captive to this world's ways. This world does not dictate my success. Did you know that me being successful has nothing to do with where I'm at? I got a few head nods and a little bit of, uh, uh, okay, no, 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 it does not, this country does not hold the success of Nathan Gibbs, the politicians, the government, nope, why, because when I died and became a, a, a Christian and gave my life to Jesus, I, I changed my address, I'm no longer, you know, in the, I'm, I'm not of the world, I'm in it, but I'm not of it, I moved, I'm now in the kingdom of God. So now my address is in the kingdom of God. So now my blessings, my prosperity, my healing, my protection comes from above, not out here at all. Okay? So it don't matter to me who's in office or who ain't in office. This cat and that cat is going to be moving on in Jesus' name. Amen? And we're going to be fine all the days of my I don't care if I was in China. I don't care where I'm at. I'm going to be protected. Why? I'm not of this And I'm not looking to this world system to be my provider. Well, if the government would do this, if they would do this, what? I, you know what? Y'all just need to find Jesus, okay? So whatever y'all do, I'll just keep shining brighter. You can't affect the child of God. Why? I don't belong to you. That'd be like, you know, somebody, you know, like my kids, you know, being affected by another family and what they do. But they're my kids. They're making decisions, thinking it's going to affect my kids. It ain't going to affect my kids. They're my kids. They're not your kids. And it's the same way in the world we live in, guys. We're not the devil's kids. We're God's kids. And that means God's going to take care of us. Do y'all think he's big enough to take care of us? Yeah. Well, Nathan, you don't understand, man. I, I got a lot of bills. and I mean, Nathan, you don't understand. There's just a lot going on in my life. Okay, what? Uh-huh. And? And God can't do it? Oh, yeah. God can do it. The problem is, is he may not do it the way you want him to do it. Hallelujah. And that's Okay. I'm not picky, just do it. Amen? Just do it. Hallelujah. Come on, just get her done. Glory to God. This world does not dictate my future. Amen? Or my success. That is now in the hands of the one I gave my life to, and it is Jesus. Paul put it this way in Galatians 5.1, which is on Mary's shirt. Hallelujah. We have freedom now. Maybe not this version, but it, it's my favorite version. Easy to read. <laughs> we have freedom now because Christ made us what? Free. So stand strong in that freedom. And what's it say right here? 
Wow. That was written to Christians. There's so many people that don't stand strong in their freedom, and they end up going back to slavery. Slavery to what? Sin. Sin. And we all have that choice. You can either choose freedom every day or you can choose to go backwards. Hallelujah. You know, there's people out there right now that are searching for the truth. So let's tell them the truth. Let's live the truth. And let's be a people that shows forth what real true freedom is. And that is being in the kingdom of God in a world that is dark and wicked. As we close today, guys, I just want to pray. I want to pray for everybody in the house. Those that are watching. Hallelujah. Online. Glory to God. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you touch each and every one of us today. Father, your word does not return void. Your word is life to our flesh, medicine to our body. Just thank you, Lord, that your word is freedom. That, Jesus, you came to really give us true freedom. But maybe some of you here today, you're not walking in true freedom. Maybe you, you, you got some issues in your life and you need somebody to pray with you. I'm here to pray with you right now. If you're here today and you say, you know, Pastor, man, look, I just, I, I have not been living that way. I've not been living that life. I've not been walking with God. I've been, I've been doing my own thing. And I, and I want to make a decision today to come to know you and to come to follow you. I want to give you my whole life today. I'm tired of running my own life. I'm tired of doing it my own way. I want to do it your way. If that's you today and you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, I just want you to be bold and raise your hand and say, man, count me in. I want, I want that. I want that right now. Or maybe you have walked with Jesus at one time. And you want to come back and make a, a new commitment. You want to renew your faith in Jesus Christ. If that's you today, raise your hand. Be bold in Jesus' name. I mean, this day right here can be a day that you always remember. Especially if you've been walking in the dark. Today can be your day to get out of the darkness and get into the light. Hallelujah, Father. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you right now? What's He saying to you? What's He saying to your heart? I mean, you know where you're at. You don't have to pretend. God sees everything, man. He sees everything. You can't run. You can't hide. And He don't want you to. He wants to love on you. Ah, but man, Pastor, man, I've made so many mistakes. I've messed up so much. I, I just don't know if I can do it. I've let people down. I, I've, I've just I, I've said and done things I'm not, I'm not thankful for. And I know that's probably, you know, God just probably ain't been happy with my life. You know what? God wants you right now. You're the one he wants. So if that's you and you want to say, hey, Pastor, pray for me, just raise your hand. I see that hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see it. Hallelujah. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? This is a personal decision, guys. It's not a decision you do for your family. It's not a decision you do for your friends. It's a decision you have to make because only you are accountable for you. And one day you will stand before that king. And as a friend, I don't want you to stand there without making it right. So one more time, if that's you and you want somebody to pray with you, I want you to be bold and just raise your hand. We're not going to embarrass nobody. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Well, if we could, let's just have everybody stand and I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you. And if you raise your hand, I want you to really just... Receive this. I want you to confess out of your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And I want us all to, to be with them, family, and pray with them. Hallelujah. It's a big decision. Some of these are, are, are maybe coming back to the Lord. Maybe some of these are, are making a decision for the first time. I believe it's more or less coming back to the Lord. So as I pray this prayer, I want you that raise your hand just to be bold and pray this and mean it. Because again, it's not between me and you. It's between you and Him. And I believe by the raising of your hand, you already committed in your heart that you're serious about this. So it's not really necessarily about the words we say. It's about the heart being revealed to the Father through your lips. So let's pray. Father, I come before you. Let me say it again. We'll all pray together, okay? Will you all pray with me? Hallelujah. Father, I come before you. And I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness and I thank you Father for receiving me back into the family of God I make a new commitment today to serve you 
all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And y'all that, that are already saved, just pray for those that raised their hand.